The Canon C70 has a Super 35 sensor with enough horsepower to spit out 120 frames per second in DCI 4K. It's got built-in ND filters, an articulating touchscreen, great autofocus, more custom buttons on your grandma's favorite sweater, and audio controls that will make any professional happy. My mic plugged in. But my question is, who the heck would buy this camera? We're gonna talk about that and much more after this intro. If you're a frequent watcher of camera reviews on this strange website that I call home, then you probably have seen that there are 14 million reviews of the Canon C70 already out there. So I don't wanna add to that noise, I just wanna talk about this camera from my perspective, and I got to borrow it for about five days from Lens Rentals. They're an amazing company, huge shout out to them, we'll talk about them later. And the reason I'm sitting in front of this the green screen is so I can just show you Canon C70 footage the entire time. You can see the creamy 16 rated stops of dynamic range, the 4K 120, the great autofocus. I color graded everything with Film Convert Nitrate. It's my color grading suite of choice. I love it so much. And also just talk about where this camera sits in the market and whether or not it's actually a smart buy compared to some other things. So we'll get into those other cameras and stuff later on in the video. First off, I just gotta say, I highly enjoyed my time with the Canon C70. I took it out with my beautiful, attractive friend, Dave Mays, who some of you may know. He was the previous host of this channel. That's why 98% of the thumbnails from this channel have him in, in them. He gave me my dream job. He's a good guy. Let's move on. Together, Dave and I gathered some neat 24 and, and 120, and a little bit of 60 here and there as well. And I also took it out for a couple other days to test some low light. Uh, can I get a coffee? No, there's no one else in here. Okay, let's move on. A couple weeks ago when I tested the C70 against my Fuji X-T4, I really started to see the true advantages of having something like this actual cinema camera over a basic ass mirrorless camera. And don't get me wrong, I love mirrorless cameras and actually I typically prefer them for my work, like the Sony a7S III here, because I do mostly YouTube stuff. But just let me finish this gosh heckin' statement okay. Dave put it best in his review on Indie Mogul when he called it the DSLR Evolved. You get classic, comfortable form factor of the DSLRs. They were chunky, but they felt nice to hold. Some mirrorless cameras just feel too tiny in the hands and it can make your footage even shakier. The C70's got that classic chunk to it, but you get the internal technology of modern mirrorless cameras Whoa. with the high-end functionality of cinema cameras. Whoa. And I don't mind the large form factor and size when you consider the benefits that it brings to the table over standard mirrorless cameras. For example, the C70 has a huge-ass battery that enables you to shoot long-form content, but it also has an internal fan so that you don't have the same overheating issues that the R5 and the R6 had when they first came out. Yes, those two cameras have gotten better with overheating due to the firmware updates Canon's put out, but the C70 was built as a reliable steed that you can ride into the war fires of hell. And if you're worried about losing that beautiful, juicy, full-frame look that the R5 and the R6 offer, well, Canon made their own focal reducer, a 0.71x speed booster, that essentially turns the C70 into a full-frame, chunky, mirrorless cinema camera. Also, built-in ND filters. I really don't need to explain that one. All I can say is I would let them slip over my sensor any day. And the last huge advantage I see in the C70 that most mirrorless cameras don't have is the incredible audio features. You get four independent channels of audio with an analog limiter. Holy crap, that's so awesome. I can yell and not clip my audio. Also, behind the screen, you get wonderful little audio dials where you can just you exactly put in how much gain you want, you can control everything manually, and you get two little baby XLR ports. I said this in my X-T4 versus C70 comparison, but it's not nice to see Canon release something that hits really hard. All the specs you need are there, it's other than the EVF. You made a camera the size of a baby microwave, but you couldn't fit an EVF anywhere in there. You could've just made it a little taller, a little wider. It's $5,500 and there's no EVF, so. Anyway, I was really impressed with the electronic image stabilization in the Canon C70. It feels a lot like the active IBIS in the Sony a7S III. It's just really good and it doesn't warp or wobble, which I know the R5 and the R6 do have some of those issues. So even when I was walking with the camera and filming handheld, 
The image stabilization did a good job of smoothing out the frame without making it look really fake. The autofocus in the C70 is an interesting topic because it's good, it's very solid, but it's not as good as the R6 or the R5. It has good face tracking and it has a cool mode called face priority where if you dip out of the frame, basically it's gonna hold that autofocus point until a face comes back into the frame. So it's not gonna jump back to the background and make it look like autofocus is super obvious. So this would be awesome for things like podcasts and interviews where you want it to look like a professional is pulling focus but it's just a beautiful little AI assistant inside the camera. I'm not sure why Canon didn't put the exact same technology as the R5 into this camera. It's a $5,500 camera. You think they could have had the best eye tracking possible. Still, the autofocus is good, but just remember you have to give this camera plenty of light for the autofocus to perform how you want it to. Now, the thing I really wanna talk about with the C70 is its price in comparison to the market competition that it faces. That sounded pretentious, but damn it, I, I got an A in English in seventh grade and I'm, I'm not afraid to write a good script. But now there are some other cameras popping up in the market that you definitely wanna look at and consider buying over the C70, depending on your needs. The first one I wanna mention, and it's a heavy hitter, is the Red Komodo. And I haven't gotten my hands on this camera in person, but I've watched a bunch of videos on it, I've researched it, and I've worked with RED cameras in the past. For $500 more than the Canon C70, 6K up to 40 frames per second RAW in the RED RAW codec, which is an absolute dream to work with. And the C70 is an XF AVC file in 4K up to 120 frames per second. It's still plenty of quality for anything I would shoot, but there are people who demand RAW. There are clients who demand RAW, and it's nice that the RED has that all built in. It's streamlined with their own codec. So you need to consider things like that depending on what kind of work you do. But also with the C70, you get the amazing autofocus that you could use for things like wedding films, even music videos and interviews. Now let's consider the new kid that just moved in from some weird ass place where they grow athletes like Denver or something. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. The names keep getting longer. No, this camera is not out yet. We've not used this camera yet. But based on what we've seen from the 6K, just the regular 6K and like the Ursa's functionality, we know that Blackmagic is making baller cameras and the pro version of the 6K is bound to be a step up from the regular one. It's gonna have internal NDs, NPF style batteries, Finally, we're gonna have good battery life in a pocket camera. It's gonna shoot in 6K up to 60 frames per second in black magic raw. Dude, that's gonna be so awesome. It's only 24.95 US daisies, baby. That, that's so cheap. Plus you get audio connections like the baby XLRs, a tilt screen finally, and some other stuff. Probably, who knows? Haven't looked at my script yet since I started saying this line. And an optional EVF, so. Epic, for sure. And the last competitor to the C70 that I wanna mention in this little mixed up world of mirrorless meets cinema smashed together is the Sony FX3. And yes, we all know that the FX3 is just an A7S III in a pro body, whatever that means, but without the EVF that's the freaking best EVF I've ever used on any camera ever. And it costs more money than the A7S III. Huh? Excuse me, Sony? Uh -huh. I mean, I'm a Sony simp for sure, but I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not buying that. Literally, I will not buy that. Listen, I'm not here to start any fights or feuds between any camera lovers. I believe that all of us can live in this land peacefully and not start wars. But my job is to present you with the camera facts and be straight up honest with you about how I feel about things. So, here we go. If I were to pick one of these cameras that we've mentioned, for professional work for me. I'm talking about me. I'm not saying what you should do. This is what I would do. I would pick the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. And I know this sounds insane because it's the one camera we haven't seen footage from. It's not even released yet. There's not reviews on it yet, just specs. And the fact that it's $2,500 and offers basically the same specs as all these other cameras minus image stabilization and autofocus. Dude, like for professional work, that camera is gonna be insane. And if autofocus is an absolute deal breaker for you in terms of a cinema hybrid mirrorless camera, then just go with the C70. 
My one issue with that is I really wish the C70 came in around the $4,000 to $4,500 USD price point. That way it could be a little bit more competitive against these other cameras that offer raw, higher resolution, higher frame rates in those higher resolutions. Either way, we're all really blessed to live in a time where pretty much all cameras are awesome and I just get to sit in front of my green screen and talk about it and hopefully make you smile. I'm jumping in here really quick, stick with me. I know we all see YouTube sponsored ads all the time, um, but I'm trying to keep mine as genuine and real as possible. And this one is sponsored by Lens Rentals, this video. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Lens Rentals, dang it. But Lens Rentals is something I absolutely recommend because I've been using Lens Rentals since before I was sponsored. And sometimes I've even rented gear from them to have it shipped to me and it's always arrived on time. They send you return labels, so it's really easy to just drop off at FedEx when you're done. I can't afford cameras like this, the C70. This is extremely expensive, but it's so fun to test out and maybe rent for a specific shoot. If you're doing a music video or a wedding and you wanna use something like this, a total beast, you can rent it super affordably for just a couple days. So go to the description and use that link if you wanna check out Lens Rentals, or when you're checking out from Lens Rentals, use code ZAC15, all caps. 15. And you'll get a discount. It supports this channel, supports me, and um, I really appreciate you guys, really love you guys. Thank you, Lens Rentals. To the next scene. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're interested in joining my camera camp later this year. Subscribing just automatically enrolls you so you can come if you want to. No pressure. Also, if you want to support what I do, you can check out my merch, like the Sony Simp collection, my Cranon hats for all my Cranon lovers. Also, Fuji juice for all my Fuji shooters out there because I know that you guys care and I love you very much, Fujers. You guys are great. So yeah, check out what I'm doing. My Instagram's in the description. I have another channel where I upload vlogs every time that I want to. Make sure to kiss your dad on the cheek and never kiss your mom on the lips if you want to have respect. And I'll talk to you soon.